Welcome back, dear friends. So I reckon the next job is to get her eye motor connected. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Teach you little thing there. It can switch up to, I think it's an amp, continuously. Nothing is simple with this project at all. Oh, I've got it all connected up and downloaded the library, Spotify library. Installed that. The first time it didn't recognise it, but then I found a different library that it did recognise. And I've just tried to compile it and it's just come up with a stream of error messages. So I'll unsolder that and go back to using half of that for this one at least. So I've got that wired up and I've got the blinking bits added to the sketch and there she is blinking and moving and I've also I was thinking about her walking the dog this morning like I do her mouth was opening too far and I was thinking well shall I add another adjusting screw because it was really handy having that first adjusting screw that stops her clacking too much as she closes her mouth um, I don't know that's just too complicated so what I ended up doing down in there, the end of the solenoid used to just push against the plastic, which could make a noise as well. One piece of felt just stuck in there, which was quite a challenge to do, I can tell you, working around all the other, these other bits. But that's perfect, it's just taken it down enough and made it even quieter. So I'm very pleased about that. And, you know, if that's still open, if you felt that was still opening too much, then um, you could add another bit of felt. I've still got to solve that problem. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Does it very rarely, but when it happens, that's not going to be very good for all the mechanisms. I'm going to try, because I haven't 3D printed anything for a while, I'm going to make a bigger slot in the base for that um, servo motor horn thing to fit in. Because I think it's just, it's obviously the resonant frequency, it's just, it's awful. So, we well, nearly did it again, but it's when she's looking forward, which is interesting. So if I make that slot a bit bigger, <laughs> stop it. There, there. Well, I've taken it apart. There's the little slot, and it, there is a little bit of give in there already. I intentionally made it slightly larger just to ensure because these vary sometimes slightly in size the um, SG90 whatever they are oh I don't know what I think then because that might be causing the wobble what I think I'll do is try and work out a way of fixing that in really firmly so it can't wobble and then trying it again just in case well I've put it back here I've put a pin through the end of the horn thing so it's absolutely firm there's no slop or giving it at all. She's already vibrated twice, a slightly different frequency. There's still the issue where I think it's the, the mass, the momentum, um, who carries the head moving and then the motor tries to bring it back too far and then it goes the other way. And it just So I need a way of switching the servos off. Now I've discovered subsequently the servo library for the Teensy it says this is the one, the only one that'll work on the Teensy, but beware, detach doesn't work. Now the thing is with servo motors, they're designed to go as quickly as possible from A to B. No niceties, just full on. And inside, oh, let me show you actually. So this is what's inside. This is the one I took to pieces in the end. But there's four screws. It's not like it's welded or glued together. And inside, got a beautiful little motor. DC motor um, and you've got a little circuit board which will have something to decode the pulses through from the signal wire so you tell it where you want it to be and an H bridge driver um, and something clever that reads the that's the potentiometer that's turned as the servo turns so it knows where it is now to my way of thinking which I haven't got a very good uh, history of I should be able to get rid of that circuit, wire all this, put this back together, wire up the potentiometer to plus 5 volts and 3.3 .3 volts because that's what the Teensy inputs and outputs work at. And then wire the motor 
up to that spare H bridge controller here. Ooh. Also, it means that I can find out where the servo motor is pointing. Because if you remember, when I first switch it on and tell it to go to 90 middle point, so I know where it is, it slams around there. Whereas I could read the value with an analog in from that potentiometer and say, oh, I know where you are. I want you to be here. Let's move slowly to that point. It's really quite exciting and I need some excitement and joy. Oh, heavens to Betsy. I'm going to get that wired up and see how well this works. Those little four beautiful little screws and it comes apart. You've got the bottom bit, the top bit. And then the middle bit where the works goes, and ho I'm hoping that I that that is the uh, the only other gear that I need, so I can get it all back together. I'm just waiting for the soldering iron to warm up, so I can detach the uh, potentiometer. But this is interesting. There is a mechanical stop. There's a little bit that sticks down off that big, the last, the final gear. Um, so that actually jams against the gears. There we are. Got some ribbon cable connected to the motor and to, to the three potentiometer connections. We get all this back together now. This is very exciting and it's making me happy. Best of all, I've got it all connected up to the analog in from the potentiometer and the motor, the titchy little motor to the H bridge interface. Got that wired up. I'm just starting to write a sketch. I thought I'd just start with nothing. A new sketch just to try and see whether this works. Oh, but it's lunchtime now. A little aside for you. My daughter makes sourdough and she's got, this is Humphrey she calls it. This is um, her special yeast mix which she feeds twice a day and has to be kept at a reasonable temperature. It's amazingly complicated the process but the bread she makes is absolutely beautiful. So that's Humphrey, and he needs to be kept nice and warm. Now the house, as the weather's got colder, is cold. And I was trying to think how it could be kept warm, so I kind of had one of these mats lying around for lizards and things. But that's huge, that's silly. And I was trying to think, what else have we got warm around the house? And then I remembered we had one of the lovely, pure, digital out dab radios that had a transformer. An old-fashioned transformer which stays pretty hot. It annoyed me. Well, it still annoys me because I'm the only one who switches it off. The rest of the family just leave it on so they can switch the radio on whenever they want. But it's warm. So what I did is a cunning plan. I had some soil pipe, unused, I hasten to add, and cut out a little thing. A bit of experimentation later. Obviously, it's all going to fall everywhere. There we are. That sits in there. And Humphrey sits on top. Now, it's, it's keeping him perfectly at the right temperature, just a nice gentle heat. In the past, he would grow probably about a centimetre a day. This is lunchtime. Look! Because she takes out a load of waste each um, in the morning and the evening. But that's amazing. He's doing very well in there. So there's a little top tip for you, cheeky little one. If you need a little heat source, an old-fashioned transformer does the trick. Well here's a nice simple little sketch to switch is on the H bridge control on one and the other and look and listen that's amazing so that's just turning round and round I've got that on analog right at a hundred so that's about half on just under half but look there's the output from the um, potentiometer now I need to write a sketch to control it, find out where it is and tell it where I want it to go. Well, that's interesting. So I've worked out which way round it's going now and I found that the way to control the speed is just to have well not pulse width modulation. It makes it too slow or too weak. Whereas if I write it, if I switch the motor on for four milliseconds, like yeah milliseconds then off for 50, it seems to retain its power and go really nice and slowly. This is most exciting, as I think I've got it sorted out after much experimentation. I've got an unsigned long servo milliseconds to do all the delays and things. Can you see that? No, you can't. I'm pointing away there. Um, because obviously this can't have any delays in it, because 
to slow it down or anything because everything else on the things he's got to be getting on with stuff like the eyes blinking and indeed all the um, the, the sound playing and everything set up the two outputs and the input just put that down to remind me what I've got so that's the analog read from the potentiometer and for now I just set it to something for example I'm, I'm, these are it's, it's still working currently um, on the on the value, the analog read value, that's it, not degrees, but that'll be easy to change. So if I put 425, which is, equates to 90 degrees, so halfway round, this is it. That's amazing. It's in the loop, so it can just be added to the loop on the other sketch. If the analog read is smaller than the, the setting that I want, in effect, minus 3, it adds a little bit of hysteresis because trying to land on exactly the right thing on a potentiometer. Yes, that's why it vibrates quite a lot, or was, I think. So it gives it a little bit of hysteresis. That's less than one degree movement, so that's fine. Um, if the millis time is up that was set, it then, because you can read a digital output that you've written to. So this is the read one. If it's high, which means the motor's on, make it low, switch it off. Set the setting, the timer, for another milli, 50 milliseconds and then go round again, leave all this. So it goes round and round and round every time checking while the um, potentiometer is smaller than the number you want, you want to set. Um, and then once it's reached that, because of the hysteresis, it's not um, smaller than, it's not bigger than, it's the other one, <laughs> which basically is switch everything off and stop until it gets a, you know, a different value to go and, and find. Isn't that lovely? And I meant to say, of course, this is really thrilling. I try not to say exciting too many times. Because it means that you can, theoretically, take to pieces any servo motor that you've got and um, make it better, make it more controllable. So it's very exciting. If you bought the motor and the potentiometer and mounted it all separately, it would cost a fortune. But the fact you can do it with um, servo motors, because they all seem to come to pieces fairly easily, is great news. Many apologies. I forgot to keep you abreast of proceedings. I've just added um, and improved the my servo control uh, function. Um, and at the end of it now, once it's reached wherever it needs to, it then adds a delay there. Um, to wait for the next head move between 2 seconds and 10 seconds and it also at the same time resets a global um, variable integer to the degrees that it's going to move next time and I can't tell you how happy this makes me look no sudden jerking no shaking violently it's just, and it's so quiet and slow and it stops perfectly as well. It's obviously not going to do it now because it's going to be waiting. Oh, look. Isn't that nice? I'll sit here and carry on admiring this. And I'm now going to add the up and down servo, which is still a servo motor. I've managed to write the sketch because I just wanted to end the previous video with her talking. I've got my wife to record a... Um, a little ending for me so that's nice very very easy to actually save onto using audacity trim it save it onto the sd card and then that just plays it i mean it's amazing and moves the mouth at the same time so what i've done is let's just switch i've got my speaker here and i will press reset to start her again it's all a bit slap happy or whatever it is but I just wanted to get it so look first of all she does that and then after 10 seconds just for this the purpose of this little video and she wakes up now as promised in the last video <laughs> I don't know where I am now I'm going to take her jaw apart because I've got an improved way of doing the axles I'll show you you can't use a solid length of metal because you can't get it into the little socket that side and that side because obviously this is solid. And I was thinking, well, you know, you could provide 
piece of uh, two millimeter thick brass rod and cut it to size and all this. And then I thought, I wonder if you can get hold of ten millimeter long, two mil by two millimeter diameter, little steel things, and you can. In fact, they are readily available from all sorts of different suppliers. I think I've got these on eBay or something. But this is great. I know that they are exactly 10mm long and 2mm diameter. So what I'm going to do is to redesign that part, the, the little socket where the two where the axles lie, redesign that with a little plastic bit in the middle, a spacer, so that you can lie one in either side, pop them in the holes, then screw the back on. Handy little sort of tip. If you've got some very, very small thing that's very awkward and difficult to get to and you can't move. Drill bits. Now I've discovered that it's just smaller than 2.5mm, just bigger than 2 So I reckon that's going to be 2.25mm. It's another day and I've been very busy this morning. I've been sitting at 3D Builder and um, doing lots and lots of adjustments and corrections and changes that I've made whilst putting and testing the first one together. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Here's an example. I just want, I'd made the original holes in this base too small and the M3 screws, whatever, wouldn't go through. So just, just take a note to myself, just make them 3.5 millimeter diameter. So um, six or seven, whatever, five or 3.5 millimeter diameter pins or cylinders, subtract them from the base that I've checked and isn't corrupted. I started it going about half an hour ago and it is still there. So that's not going to work. This is one of these things that is so frustrating because you've got to try and find a way of tricking it. It might be that I have to cut this in half and then do them and then flip the holes. I don't know. What a joy. Anywho, in more important and fun things, look, this is my collection, the latest one. It's number 79 of my series of designs right from the simple solid head through. But all of these bits, ooh, I don't know what I'm moving here, all of these bits are now corrected. I've got those lovely corrected eyes. I've just improved the neck. Very pleased about that. I've made, extended some bits and pieces, there's room for the cable down there. Increased uh, the bit, filled in part of this slot that is allowing her mouth to open and close when her head's right down. Um, because I wasn't happy with it. As she looked up, you, she'd look up and then you'd see a big hole um, under her chin. So what I've tried to do is add a little bit there so you wouldn't actually st still, still see right in. So lots and lots of improvements and changes. So I've got the new neck printing. That should be about six and a half, seven hours. I have to say I'm so pleased that I broke the, the, the neck into all these separate parts. That, that and that because I've had to change all of them really. So while that's printing I've um, improved this with those little lugs for the 10mm dowels and I'm going to put this together and see whether it works. There's the test one. Didn't bother printing all of a whole mouth, I just did the, the end of it and that seems to work. It's the next day. Just been with my son to see the Banksy exhibition in London, which is fantastic, really good. And now this has finished printing the new neck with its little extra extension there and some improvements were there. Um, so I will get that replaced and see how well this one fits. I've subsequently got involved in a secret project, which is most exciting. Apologies if there's a gap in videos, but more on all that later. Thanks again for watching.